Hello and welcome to this new tutorial series that I'm making. These are going to be the basic things that you need to know before you can start working in After Effects. I'm going to cover quite a lot of uh, subjects, but if you have a well specific subject that you would like me to discuss, like me to explain, then please leave a comment on one of these introductory videos and I will do my best to get it out as soon as possible. Today we are discussing layers and everything that I could think up that you could possibly want as a beginning After Effects user to make your motion graphics or whatever else you want to make. Okay, here we are in After Effects. We are going to start off with a new composition as always. Uh, it doesn't really matter what we choose here. I'm going to choose 1280 by 720 with 30 frames per second and I'm going to call it Comp1. It doesn't really matter what you do, you can uh, call it whatever. Um, we're going to explain some layer issues. So yeah, we're, this is an introduction so I won't explain everything. I will explain text, solid, uh, shape layer, I guess null object and adjustment layer. I want to discuss the camera, the light and uh, well anything else you can do with it. But um, yeah, let's uh, start with the easiest one and well the one that I use most is solid. Um, the solid is basically, oh let me show you first, is basically a, a sheet of paper that you put over your, well composition and you can make it any size that you want. Uh, personally I like to always keep them comp size. You can uh, use this button to immediately make them the same size as your composition is. And then of course you can of, you can also well tune it yourself. So the color is picked by just clicking on the color and then selecting another color hitting OK or if you have a color scheme set up then you can pick it from your color scheme that you have somewhere on the screen. But we will see that, uh, I guess, later. So for now we're going to make it red and I want to show you how layers work in general. So we're going to make another one. I'm going to just make two of them. Uh, you can of course make as many layers as you want and most of the animations are based on uh, having a lot of layers in action or in play here that uh, do the same thing. As you can see the blue layer is currently the one that we see and we see nothing of the red layer. That is because the blue layer is on top of the red layer in our, uh, our setup here, in our composition. If we reverse that order, which is done by just clicking, holding the mouse button and then dragging them to uh, well, to the position where you want them, you can see that the other one now shows true. So the red solid. And I can also move them, so uh, layers have several properties, we will see that in a moment. And if I move my layer, I should select the red one if I want to, so to move the red one, then you can see the red one is still preferred, but because it isn't here, so it, it doesn't show at this point, uh, the blue layer will show true. So if we move the blue layer, then the background, which is currently black, but is in fact uh, transparent, that will show true. So if we make more layers even than this, so if we make a new one, we will see that that one can be intersected with all of these. So let's make a green one and just um, show what that does. Obviously if I put it on, uh, on top, nothing will shine true. Then if I put it in the middle, only the red one will show true, but the blue one is still completely hidden behind the other two, well, mainly behind the green one. And then if we put it on the bottom, obviously we're going to see a piece of all of them. So um, with this done, so with this understood, I guess, uh, we can, by the way, reset the layers if we, um, if we want to. Here you can go to uh, uh, this little triangle and there it says transform and if you hit reset, it just resets all the properties. Anyway, we're going to go into the transform with our uh, red layer selected. We're going to go into the transform by clicking the triangle and there we have anchor point, position, scale, rotation and opacity. This is everything that you can do with your layer. So we'll start with the opacity because it's by far the easiest one. Uh, it is just how much of the layer you can actually see. So you can mix colors with the layer underneath it. You can also type it in by just clicking on the number and typing whatever you want. And obviously this is very useful if you're trying to create a blending color. Uh, Keyframing, like with this stopwatch, we will do in a later, uh, well, later tutorial. This is just about uh, 
well, the very basic stuff for layers. So uh, rotation, it's also easy to understand, but there's there are some, some issues with it. So you can see the layer in its entirety will rotate, and you will also see it will rotate around the middle, which is the anchor point, and that is where that comes in. So resetting that to zero, the anchor point is, well, now the middle of the layer, but we can move it, and you can see that the layer actually seems to move, but it is in fact the anchor point that moves, it just happens to be in the middle of our screen. So the layer now is no longer in the middle of our screen. If we want to repair that, we're going to have to adjust the layer itself and um, put it back to its original position. So this should be 930. And then you can see that if we put them at the same uh, number, the position and the anchor point, the layer will be back in its original position. So if we now rotate, then it will rotate around this point and not around the middle of our screen. We can still let it rotate around the middle of our screen, of course, but we have to set our position to 640. And then the layer will rotate around this point, which is in the middle of our screen. So the middle of our screen is not necessarily the rotation point of our layer. And that is a very important thing to understand because knowing what your layer is going to do makes it possible for you to actually anticipate what an animation is going to look like. So we're going to set this back to 640 and then we're going to go to scale which is I guess also a very easy property. It just scales the entire uh, layer. But as you can see it has constrained properties on if you click that, then you can actually just do one size at a time, so either X or Y. And if you then have the right thing, so let's say we want uh, 70 by 70 percent, and um, uh, yeah, so this is where we are, and now we want to make it kind of a, a square. So we have a square, but we want to keep it a square. Just Put on the constraint properties again and now it will scale as a square. So it can be very useful, it is definitely very useful in some situations, but it is uh, also something that you need to keep in mind because uh, the, the uh, constraint properties can actually throw off your, uh, well, what you're trying to do from what you're actually doing. So currently you can see whichever I take, whether I take the X or the Y, it doesn't matter. It will just scale the entire layer and it will always keep the same number or the same ratio between the numbers, I should say. So and then if I uh, unlock it, it um, becomes different. So you can scale them one at a time. You can, by the way, go into negative uh, scaling, which isn't very useful for a completely blank layer, but um, if we have something on the right side of the layer that we want on the left side, we can basically mirror it with this. So it will mirror whatever we had on it, and I can probably show you that by making something that isn't part of this tutorial, but I'm still going to do it. Uh, we're going to add a mask to our layer, so we have our layer selected. We're going to add a mask on this side and we're going to say it's a subtract mask so we can still see the red thing. And now if we, um, if we reverse the, uh, the scale, so we're going to do that only in X direction, you can see that it moves to the other side. So yeah, it's, it can be very useful for some animations and especially if you're having something on the left side of the screen that you want on the right side and you want it exactly mirrored, you just set this to minus 100% and then it will all scale naturally again. So it will just, uh, if you put the constraint properties on, it will just have the minus in front of it, but it will still scale exactly the same. And you can, of course, reverse the effect by uh, just moving it back. But then, yeah, well, it's easy to understand. Top to bottom works exactly the same. So if we move our mask uh, to a different position, then we can actually see that. So if we move our mask to, let's say, the bottom here, and then we um, we go into the Y position and you can see that it will work there as well. So it goes from top to bottom. Keep in mind that um, it will be upside down. So if you're making something with a person, this is not the way to do it. 
Uh, it's just it's fairly easy to work with masks or sorry to work with uh, layers. It's just that it is something that you need to understand how it works. And um, yeah, basically, I always think of them as sheets of paper. That's by far the easiest way to see what's going on. So you put the sheet of paper on top of something else, and you can have like the the semi transparent paper by making uh, opacity things but it will just mix with the color underneath it and obviously if I make this one transparent as well we will even see the green in uh, in this so I will make this a little less opaque and then you can see that the color changes into something that also has green in it and I can show you the difference by just turning off the green layer this is the effect of the green layer so these uh, these little eyeballs here those are uh, the, the visibility so if you turn them off the layer will be completely invisible uh, it can be very useful for editing stuff and then uh, we also have this one the solo it hides everything that's not tagged by the solo so you can also do two layers this can be very useful if you have a lot of layers and you only want the effect of one or two or maybe even three layers in your composition it can be super useful. Then if you're done with a layer and you're saying, well, I'm not going to change it anymore, you can put on the lock and it will prevent the layer from being edited. As you can see, I can't move it anymore, whereas these can still be moved very easily. So yeah, use that whenever you can because it is a very useful property. I'm not going to explain all of this, that will be for later. The last thing I wanted to tell you about the solid layer is that you can actually change its color by um, selecting it, going to layer solid settings and you can adjust the color here if you want to. So if I wanted to make this black I can just make it black and then everything on the layer will be black. So um, yeah that's really all I have to say on these, uh, these solids. Now let's move on to our next layer type uh, which is going to be, well text is pretty straightforward Let's, uh, let's go through that very easily. Uh, so you basically just make a text layer. You can type on it. Uh, the, all of the, the uh, text effects are over here. So you can well select your font, select whatever you want, the size, the color, the color of the outer edge, uh, so the stroke. Um, yeah, everything that you need is right over here. So if I just type text and I want to edit it, I can just select the layer and change the color for example and that should work. Well actually I should select the text obviously because I, otherwise it doesn't know what, it, what you want with it. So yeah you can also change the stroke and there you go make the stroke bigger. Uh, for that one I think you only need to select the yeah you only need to select the layer. So you can make the stroke bigger, you can um, uh, select a different family here and it will all just be very easy. So that should be pretty straightforward. Um, the rest of the layer by the way is see-through. So it's transparent if you type on top of something you don't even have to do anything it's just transparent. So uh, text layers very easy to work with. Uh, not really used that much well if you need text but whoever needs text. Um, yeah, the, then as I said, no light, no camera. Uh, I guess we can do the shape layer then. Shape layers are layers that are made for shapes. Yeah, sounds strange, right? Uh, they have a fill, they have a stroke, and those fill and stroke will be set for everyone that actually joins the family. So you can see that um, I can make shapes here they will appear over here and the advantage of shape layers there are very few advantages compared to the solid layers but one of the big advantages is that you can actually adjust everything about them so you can adjust the size uh, currently they're linked together so uh, keep that in mind if you want to change something if you um, uh, scale it up like this then yeah it's only one um, or it's, it's in bo both dimensions, you only ch change one of the values. You can of course also, well, unconstrain them and then you can size them however you want. The position, this is the position of the ellipse path, so keep that in mind, not of the layer. The layer itself is under here 
it has the exact same transforms and if you move it all of the objects will move. If you rotate it all of the objects will rotate. However, every object has its own transform. So this is just a path then you also have a transform which if I use that, so if I rotate this, only this one shape will rotate and it will rotate around its own anchor point, not the layer anchor point. The layer rotates around the layer anchor point, and you can see that. That's in the middle, right here. But this particular one, so uh, ellipse 4 in this case, rotates around its own anchor point. Every shape has its own position as well, so you can move it, uh, even though the layer isn't moving, the layer itself has its own transform as I said and every one of these has the same menu. You can also adjust the fill of one of them if you just go into this and you can see that this one is now blue the rest is still the color of the original and you can of course do the same for stroke. You can set the stroke to something else if you want to and uh, just create different shapes in one layer. It can be very useful especially if you want to keep them together and uh, you can adjust a lot of things about these. I will go into uh, one of these, uh, well what you can do with uh, shape layers in a later tutorial because it's way too much to include in this one. I just wanted to show you that it's available and you can use all kinds of stuff like the star tool will have all its uh, things available. Notice that it just changed the color to what I had here instead of keeping that to the original one. It's one of those things that I uh, I dislike about it. Maybe in the uh, I, I use CS4, so maybe in the future uh, releases. So no, the more recent <laughs> releases I should say because this is uh, fairly old. Um, you actually have better control over those things. But here you can even set the number of, um, of sides after you create it. That is something you cannot do on a solid layer. And therefore, you, if you want to use that, you definitely need to use a shape layer. So um, once again, position works the same. Uh, this is all just for the path. Then uh, the, uh, the, the, the transform itself can also move position. So if you move here, so if you move this, it looks the same, but it's actually not the same because it will move uh, relative to the anchor point, which makes it a lot harder to, uh, to keep track of where your rotation is going. So I do recommend that you use the, or the official transforms here instead of this um, uh, polystar path crap because you really don't want to use the uh, position well the rotation this rotation will always be around the center so wherever your anchor point is so that can be very useful but the position it's normally not very useful to use this so just saying that you can also change the shape here so um, you can you can do whatever you want and this is the one super big advantage of shape layers for the rest yeah, they kind of are weaker than the solid layers. They're just harder to work with. They have so many options that no, that you normally don't even need. And um, yeah, I'm just not a big fan. But they come in very handy at times. Anyhow, next layer type then. Uh, the null object, which seems like completely useless to people that just start. It is just this. It has no fill. It has nothing. It just has a transform and you can see that transform right here, but you can't draw on this. You, you can do nothing to it. Um, all it has is an anchor point, position, scale, rotation and opacity. So why would I use it? Well, you can link this one to other layers. So let me create a new layer. And this is just for demonstration purposes. This is not intended to be a full explanation of how this works. So let's uh, scale this down a bit so we can actually see the edges. And now we're going to take the null object. We're going to put it... Oh, I didn't want to do that. We're going to put it over here. Uh, just so you see that they're not the same. And I'm going to parent the null object to the red solid. 
So now the red solid looks at the null object to know what it's supposed to do. And if I move the position now, both of them will move. So this is, I'm using the position of the null object. And you can see both of them move in either direction. I can also make them scale. And I can also make them rotate. And look at where it's rotating. It's rotating around the anchor point of the null object. So you have full control over that. And then opacity will probably not work, but uh, that is fine. So uh, the opacity is only for the null object. It does not get carried over as a transform. So it can be very useful to have these little do-nothing thingies in your composition because you can put uh, tracking data on it so you can move your layer uh, according to whatever your footage is and then you can apply that to something else, to a layer or to multiple layers or just have the position onto the layer or whatever. You can do very fancy things with it and it can be super useful. So that's why we have null object. They're not very useful on their own, but in combination with other layers, they can be super useful. Then adjustment layers. Oh, I don't know why I just deleted my solid because I still need it. So the last one that I'm going to discuss here is the adjustment layer. Adjustment layers are empty. As you can see here, the effects control has zero in it. it you can't draw on them once again. Well, I guess you can technically, but um, I'm not actually sure if you can, but yeah, well, whatever. The thing is, what we do with adjustment layers is if we have multiple layers, so let's uh, make another one, and as I said, you can change its color by easily just going to the layer settings, changing the color, and coming back. I'm going to set this over here so we can see the difference. The adjustment layer will put its effects on everything behind it. So, yeah, I already had it selected from my previous tutorial. If I put a curves on here, which is an, a color adjustment, and I adjust the red color, that will be applied to both of the layers underneath it. The thing is, because I use uh, these particular layers, I won't explain that any further. I will need a tint effect as well, and we will see what the tint effect does. It makes everything black and white for now. Well, it just says black is going to be black, white is going to be white, so there's no more color. Um, yeah, you can see now that it applies that to both the green and the red solid, even though there are no effects on it. It's only on the adjustment layer. And now with the curves, I can actually adjust them. And you can see how that works. So if I uh, make them uh, just a little bit brighter and I uh, go to the red channel and I put some red in it, then you can see they become different shades of red. And I can do that, of course, with any color. So if I just adjust it a little bit, you can make the colors and you can have your own color scheme. So if I did this, for example, these colors match very well. And if I wanted to add more blue into it, then yeah, I can. And the, the shades of this color will just be applied to this. So you can make your entire thing in black and white and then color it with an adjustment layer. This is just one of the effects you can do with it. You can do a whole lot with adjustment layers, but I just wanted to show you that they apply to every layer behind it and not to layers in front of it. So if I put the green layer on top of the adjustment layer or even make a new one, let's, uh, let's put one of them in the bottom here and one of them in the top and then yeah, you can see that the one up top, that's this one, that one is still green, where the other ones are blue. Whereas if I put it behind the adjustment layer, it will of course become the same color as the other green one. So, they're very useful. They're definitely one of the best things that you can, uh, you can have in a layer. Because, uh, well, sometimes you just need to apply an effect to multiple things and, well, this is how you do it. This is the easiest way, at least. You can do it in several other ways, but yeah. Well, that's um, all I have to say for now. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned something today, and I will see you next time.